Tackle football is one of the most dangerous sports in the world. You have two or more players running after each other. Um, some players trying to tackle. Other players trying to avoid the tackle. So naturally, the sport is just dangerous. Um, most players in the NFL do get injured. Like You can't name a player that hasn't gotten injured in the NFL, which is crazy when you think about it. And that's with all sports in general. You know, All sports players are bound to get injured. But the NFL has taken a negative, they have a negative reputation with the media and fans because just how dangerous football is, you know, with all the CTE findings and players' deaths that it came out. And naturally so, because the NFL neglected the players for money. So today I'm going to explain to you, one, how the NFL got to that point, and two, what the NFL has done since that point to make the game safer and better for the future. So the NFL is the highest grossing sports league in the world, they grossed sixty billion dollars in twenty eighteen, which is crazy to think about it. Sixty billion dollars. So, in about two thousand, in the early two thousands, in the late nineties, two thousands, reports started coming out about you know CTE and all this stuff, and the NFL didn't really take it that seriously until about two thousand nine, when you know it was really when it hit its peak about media getting onto the NFL, fans you know getting onto the NFL, and then you know players were dying and stuff. So then. Finally, 2009, the NFL actually took it seriously as they were losing their losing revenue. They took it seriously and they implemented new rules and protocols. Not just 2009, but from about 2009 to about you know 2016, they they implemented rules to make the game safer and better. So t- first, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go over the old concussion protocol. You know, what was the old concussion protocol? And this is what made the game so bad was because the old protocol only had three levels to it. So there's like you know low mid and then there was like serious right so a player could go as long as a player didn't have a serious concussion they could go back out and play which really isn't good because you know players want to play especially players in the NFL who are pro players they want to play as much as possible so they have a concussion they want to go back out as quickly as they possibly can so sometimes it'll like shake off the feeling oh like I'm dizzy oh like I can't like you know all the different stuff that concussions have They'll put those feelings on the side because they want to go back out and play the game that they love, which is really unsafe. Um, so also, doctors didn't have that much of a say. So the doctors didn't have the final say on whether a player could go back out into the field or not. And this is really bad because the doctors are the medical experts, right? So they should be the ones to like say whether this player should go back out and play or not. But in the mid '90s or early 2000s, you know, doctors didn't have that say uh, like they do now. So. Now I'm going to explain the new technologies and new protocols that the NFL has implemented to make the game safer. So the NFL now has a new concussion protocol. There are five levels to the NFL's concussion protocol. There are like low, and then there's like you know like the mid levels, and then there's a high level. Out of so out of five, if a player has a concussion higher than level two out of five, they cannot go back into the game. Um, so the doctors are the ones who like grade the level of concussion that the player has. Um, so also now the doctors have a final say. So the doctor, even if a player wants to go back out there, the doctor can say no. This player is not going back out to the game. He is not fit to play in the NFL game. Doctors have the final say now, which is really it's just good because they're the medical professionals. They should be the ones saying this player should go back out to the field, not the coaches or players. Um, so also there are new technologies um, that better that help NFL players better now. Uh, they have new form-fitting helmets. So one of the reasons players got concussions is because they had general-fitting helmets. So you, the, if there was space in your helmet, you're more likely to get a concussion because your head will bang up against the pads along with the force and impact that the player is hitting you with. So it just makes uh, the concussion even worse. So now they have, they can take scans of your head and send it to the helmet companies like Riddell, and then Riddell will send back a helmet specially fitted for you. So... With a tight fitting helmet, you're less like your head's not going to like move around inside your helmet, so you're less likely to get a concussion. Not saying that it still can happen because they still can, but you're less likely to, to get a concussion with these new general fitting helmets. Also, they have new uh, with new technologies include like pads, and they even have scans for your feet. They will make cleats specifically for you, so that your foot doesn't move. Which you know NFL ankle sprains are really uh, are a common injury. Um, so they'll make cleats specifically for you so you don't get, um, like, ankle sprains. It's less likely to get ankle sprains, stuff like that. So all these two next technologies are crazy. But they also have new rules. They've implemented 30 rule changes since 2009 to make the NFL game safer. 
So one of the main rules that you see now is the defenseless player rule. So you cannot go head head first into a head or neck area of a defenseless player, um, because you know they're a defenseless player is like a receiver catching a ball. Um, that's like a defenseless player because you know they're not racing for the hit. That's the most dangerous part of the game is the defenseless player. So the NFL took actions against this defenseless player to better protect them because they're the main ones getting concussions, you know, getting knocked out. A receiver looking up to catch the ball and then a safety just like boom, head headshot and right into the neck and then, you know, a receiver gets knocked down to the turf. Um, so an example of, you know, defenseless players, Hall of Fame quarterback Troy Aikman, his career ended early because of a concussion. Um, so he was playing in a game in, in the Dallas Cowboys old stadium, and he actually got blindside hit by a defensive lineman, and he woke up in the hospital. He said this on an e- interview on ESPN. He woke up in the hospital wondering how he got there. He had no idea how he got to the hospital. He he remembered, last time he remembered he was at the game, so he didn't even remember getting knocked out. The only reason is that he knew what happened was because people in the hospital told him, like, hey, Troy, you got knocked out in the game. Like, a player hit you. Um, so he, his concussion was so serious that they take him to the hospital. So now uh, they have different ways to prevent this. So they have new penalties to prevent players from doing these type of hits. So they have, like, if you hit a defenseless player in the head or neck area, you get ejected. It's a 15-yard penalty, and you also get fined. Um, so the, the fine is up to the commissioner. You know, it can be from 50000 you know, 75000 It just depends on the commissioner. Um, but I like this penalty system because it not only has on-the-field consequences, but that's off the field consequences, you know. Players don't want to get fined because they already aren't guaranteed all the money in the contracts. Like, you know, NBA has fully guaranteed contracts. The NFL contracts aren't like that. So if a player signs for a $100 million contract, he might not get $100 million. He might get $50 million guaranteed, but the other $50 million is with incentives. So players already aren't getting all what their contract is worth. So they really don't want to, you know, get have to pay all these, you know, small little fines for committing these penalties. So it really puts players against doing these penalties. And it's actually made the game better because I don't know if you guys watched the last Super Bowl recently, but, like, nowadays the the games are high-flying. Uh, you know, the, the game used to be, like, 10-7 Super Bowls. You know, Patrick Mahomes had a 20-point turn in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, which had never been done before, That's oh, well, except for the New England Patriots. But the second time it's been done before. But when you think about it, the NFL has really taken strides to make the game safer. You know, the NFL concussions went down 29% from 2017 to 2018. They only had 125 concussions, which is less than one per game. So you see, the NFL has really made strides to make the game safer.